Today, as Americans, we are rightfully, righteously angry that our government, the Biden administration, has armed and abetted, aided and emboldened Azerbaijan's oil-rich Aliyev regime. That is today committing real-time genocide against Artsakh's 120,000 indigenous Armenian Christians. As you all know, Azerbaijan's aggression, with the solid backing of Turkey, has caused immense suffering and has violated international law, including Articles 2B and 2C of the Genocide Convention. We gather here today to hold our government accountable, to save all that can be saved, and to rededicate ourselves to the proposition that this must never happen again to those remaining on the ground in Artsakh, those living in fear today in Armenia, or any people in any place around the world. President Joe Biden's recent words at the United Nations General Assembly ring all too hollow. If we abandon the core principles of the United Nations to appease an aggressor, can any member state of this body feel confident that they will, not, that they will be protected? There is truth in his word, but no action to follow them up. Our State Department recently vowed before Congress that it would not tolerate any Azerbaijani attacks on Artsakh, and then it did just that. We have seen no American leadership at all against Ilham Aliyev, this generation Saddam Hussein. Only empty promises for Armenians, arms for Azerbaijan's military flowers at Artsakh's funeral. A betrayal of the very principles we claim to champion. As the granddaughter of a genocide survivor, with family and friends driven from Artsakh this very week, it's hard to hear the U.S. proclaim, never again. Never again is becoming an empty promise while we ship arms to the side doing it, again and again, while blocking USA to Artsakh during nine long months under blockade. The record shows that the administration did not lift a finger to break Azerbaijan's blockade. No airlift, no cutting off of military aid to Baku, no sanctions on Aliyev. A shameful abandonment of our moral and legal duty. A dangerous signal to the authoritarians of this world. And a green light for the next genocide. Even at this late date, after more than half of Artsakh has been forcibly ethnically cleansed, President Biden refuses to enforce U.S. law restricting aid to Azerbaijan, refuses to enforce Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act. This is a message of weakness, not strength, of surrender to forces of intolerance, of a betrayal not only of our values but of our interests, because Azerbaijan is not our ally. They bust our sanctions and block starving children. The Aliyev family runs an oil-rich dictatorship. Their children own hundreds of millions of dollars of property across Europe and the Middle East. They do not need and surely do not deserve our American tax dollars. We can stop that aid today. The president can enforce Section 907 or our Congress can roll back the president's authority to waive this law. It is that simple, if the political will exists. We are blessed to stand today in solidarity with our partners in support of persecuted Christians in Artsakh 
Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Nigeria, Egypt, Ethiopia, and around the world. We must, for all of these at-risk faith communities, demand American leadership, American action. For Artsakh, that begins with calling out Azerbaijan's genocide against Artsakh, then cutting off military aid to Azerbaijan, enforcing sanctions against its dictator, and sending robust U.S. humanitarian aid to more than 100,000 homeless refugees. Here in Washington, that means holding the Biden administration accountable for its complicity. For absent such accountability, for as long as genocide becomes, uh, remains good for business, we create the conditions for genocide. And that we cannot and will never accept. Thank you.